Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah and today I'll be showing you how you can easily create your own custom photo confetti using your Cricut cutting machine. This is a great way to add some extra special personalization to your next birthday, bachelorette, or holiday party. The possibilities are endless. This is a really easy three-step process where first I'll show you how to prep your image by removing the background, then second, upload that image to Cricut Design Space, and then third, finally make the confetti using the print and cut technique. So let's snap to it. To prepare our image to turn it into confetti, the first step is to remove the image background to isolate our subject. You can do this so easily with the free website, remove.bg. All you have to do is launch the site, go to upload, and find the location where your image is saved, then click open. That's literally it. The site will automatically remove the background of the image. The checkerboard pattern you see behind your subject just means the background is transparent. I'm using a photo of my friend Lauren's adorable pug Morty for my demo today. Once we go over to Cricut Design Space, we're going to clean this image up to be only Morty's face, so I'm not concerned at all that his legs look a little wonky here. Okay, now we just need to hit download to save this new version of the image with the background removed to our computer. Take note of where it's saved. Next, we will upload this image to Cricut Design Space. I'll do this by opening a new project, then select Upload from the left-hand menu. Select Upload Image, then browse to the location where you just saved the photo, select Open, and follow along with the prompts through these next windows. Because we're going to print and cut this image, we want to select Complex Image Type to keep all the fine details, then hit Continue. I think it'll look super cute just to have Morty's face as our confetti. So on the Select and Erase screen, I'm going to use the Eraser tool to narrow down the image to only Morty's head. You can use the slider to adjust the eraser size and zoom in to help with any detail cleanup. For the best result, try to make the edges as smooth as possible to allow for more polished cuts in the end. I think this looks good, so I'll click Continue. The last prompt here will be the Upload type. Select the Print and Cut Image option, then select Upload. After you select Upload, your image will show up in the recent uploads. I'll select my image here, then click Add to Canvas. The image got inserted at about three by three inches, so I resized this down to about three quarters of an inch square. This is the size of confetti I was going for, but you can resize this to any size that you would like. This is totally optional, but to add a little variation to my confetti, I'm going to copy and paste my image. Then select the copy and then go to flip, horizontal, and now I have a mirror image just to add some interest. And that is it for the design part. Now is the fun part of physically putting our product together. I'll start by clicking on make it. On this next screen, I'll up the project copies to 20. You can see how this will repeat my two images of Morty 20 times for 40 pieces of confetti total. You can adjust the quantity to your preference, then hit continue. My process here will be to first print out the project on my home inkjet printer on print and cut vinyl, then use my Cricut to cut out the individual pieces. Before I go any further, I'll be sure to put my print and cut vinyl into my printer tray. All right, now I'm ready to hit send to printer, which will take you to the print setup. Be sure your home printer is selected. I like to turn on the bleed so that the ink bleeds slightly over where the cut will be for a really clean result in the, in the end. And then this is optional, but I like to turn on the system dialog, which is just gonna bring up your printer's additional settings once you hit print on this screen. You can see here after hitting print where my printer settings pop up. I like to go in and just turn up the print quality to best for the best quality print I can get. Your settings may look slightly different depending on your printer, but finally hit print and you can see how this will come out looking great. You'll notice this black border around my image. The Cricut cutting machine is going to use that border as a guide to know where to cut the images. Don't alter this border whatsoever prior to cutting. So before I cut, I just want to point out that this print and cut vinyl is very flexible and I don't think it would make for great confetti material on its own. So before we send it to the Cricut to cut, I'm going to stick it to a piece of glitter cardstock. Not only will this give the confetti a heavier weight, but it will also give it a nice looking backside. So to do this, I'm going to trim off the excess of my print and cut vinyl, then peel off the entire remaining sheet and place this on the wrong side of the cardstock so that the fun glitter will show up on the backside. 
Okay, now I'm going to carefully trim off the excess outside of the black border and we'll save these scraps for another project. Now I'm ready to place my project on the Cricut mat with the printed image on top. This project now has some weight to it, so to make sure it stays in place during the cut, I'm going to use painter's tape to tape it to the mat. Not to beat a dead horse here, but seriously, don't cover up that black border. Last up before we cut, since this is a fairly intricate cut through thicker material, I'm going to clean up my blade here by poking it into a ball of aluminum foil a dozen times or so. I saw this tip on TikTok for sharper, cleaner cuts, and it seems to work pretty well for me. All right, now I'll go back to my computer where Design Space will prompt me for the cutting step after printing. After several test cuts, what worked best for me was using the medium cardstock setting with more pressure setting selected. I loaded up my mat in the Cricut and I'm ready to hit that magic make it button. Here you can see how the Cricut will first scan to orient itself using that black border and then after a minute or so it will begin cutting. When the cutting is complete I'll remove the project from the mat. The confetti pretty easily punches out of the sheet and see look how nice it looks on both sides. This confetti was a total hit and so easy to do. Well, I hope you learned something and were inspired to try something new today. Please leave me a comment below how you plan to use this technique. If you enjoyed my tutorial, please stamp that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be the first to know of all my latest videos. See you next time.